By just using two parts and some math, we can create this cool looking tornado effect. So the first thing you guys want to do is insert two parts into your game, preferably two spheres. And then scale them down. And then we are going to anchor the parts and also turn off can collide. These parts look kind of boring, so I'm going to add some highlights to them, just like this. And then the last thing is we're going to rename this white part to be our origin part. And then the other one, our blue one, we're going to name that spin. Because this spin part will be the part that goes around our main origin part to achieve the tornado effect. So what really sells the tornado effect is the use of trails in our part. So in our spin part, we are going to insert two attachments and a trail. And then inside of the trail, set attachment zero to one of the attachments and attachment one to the other. And now we actually need to position these attachments. So one is at the top and the other is at the bottom. And now if we move around our part, we have a trail. The trail by itself looks a little bit boring. So in the trail, you guys can change the color if you would like. I'm going to turn on face camera. And if you guys want some light onto your trail, you can enable light emission or set it to one. And there's a little bit of glow added to your trail. You as well can change your transparency. But the other thing I'm going to change is the width scale. So basically what I'm going to do is go down, click the three dots, and I'm going to make it so it ends at a slower speed. So now if we move it around, you'll see it kind of has a nice little animation to it when the lifetime runs out. And this last thing I'm going to do is kind of something I like to do, and that is the lifetime. I'm just going to set the lifetime. I usually do one second around there. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to set that to one second. So now the setup for our two parts are now complete. So now I'm going to insert a script into server script service, and we can begin by getting run service. And also we need to get our origin and our spin part. So that's as easy as saying origin is equal to game.workspace.origin and also spin game.workspace.spin. This tornado system is very customizable and it has four settings we can mess around with. The first one being the elapsed time since the effect started, which we're going to refer as E time. And we're going to set that to zero. Also, the radius in which the part goes around the origin, we're going to set that to 10 for right now. And we also get an amplitude setting. And we're going to set that to 5. And then we also can apply a speed factor. So we're going to set a speed factor. And we're going to set that to 1 for right now. And we will change it as we actually start testing it. Now we need to make a function and I'm going to call it tornado and then to actually help this all come together we get the stepped or just step from heartbeat which is what we're going to use run service heartbeat or you could also think of step as delta time if you want to put that in instead whichever one you guys want to put in here. And then we are going to add delta time to our elapsed time. So we're going to say E time equal to E time plus delta time. Or if you guys want to save some time, you can say E time plus equals delta time. And now we are going to get into some more complex math. And the first thing we're going to get is a Y position for our tornado. So y position is math dot sign, and then we're going to say e time times our amplitude to get our y position. And then we're going to add a radius to the y position by saying current radius, and we're going to set this to the radius, and we are going to add it to the y position. And then the final thing is we're going to get a displacement displacement variable 
which is e time times math.py times 2, so it goes in a circle, and we're going to multiply this by our speed factor. So now we have our y position, our current radius, and then we also have a displacement. But now we actually need to turn this into a vector. So we are going to say displacement vector. And this will be equal to vector 3.new. And in here, we're going to say math dot sign displacement. And then outside of this, we're going to put times current radius and then put a comma. The next thing is amplitude. And by the way, this is our y axis. So it will be amplitude plus our y position. And then for the last thing, which is the z axis, we're going to say math dot cosine. And then in here, make sure you guys can see that we're going to put in our displacement again and we're going to multiply it by current radius. And if I did that correctly and you followed it correctly, we should have this about done. So then the last thing we're going to do, or one of the last things, is set the spin part C-frame. And we're going to set this to our origins C-frame, but we're going to add the displacement vector. Now we just have to do one more thing, and that is to actually make it work. We need to say run service dot heartbeat connect and then connect it to our tornado local function so now when you play your game we have the spin part going around and around our origin part kind of like in a tornado motion but we do kind of need to change some stuff so it looks more like a tornado kind of hologram effect and the first thing i'm going to change is the speed factor i'm going to change that to two so it goes around a little bit faster and I don't think I'm going to change the radius or amplitude. You guys can mess around with that if you want, but I think I like these two for right now. And another thing is if you want to change the size of the trail, well, that's really easy. We just go here into our workspace and our explorer, go to our spin part, go to our trail, and we can go to our width scale and we can start our scale at a smaller number if you guys really want to do that see that's a little bit smaller uh, I think a good in between is maybe about right here that looks pretty good and then one more thing to make it look a little bit better I was a little bit mistaken on the lifetime I'm actually going to raise the lifetime so the trail stays there for a little bit longer so I'm gonna set maybe something like five seconds kind of just play around with it as you can see we can actually see the trail moving around in a tornado like form and obviously you guys can change that to however you like it so now if we grab our origin and move it around by using the arrows it looks a little bit weird but you know it's still spinning around our parts and that looks kind of cool Maybe you guys don't want to use the actual effect in your game, but I've seen other games use the tornado-like motion, like Tornado Simulator. They kind of use this starter character tornado kind of thing. And maybe you guys could use this math somewhere in your game to make a tornado, but uh, you can also make the effect out of it using the trail. But obviously, if you want to use the math for this, you can do that too. And you guys also might be wondering if you can do this in a local script. Well, you definitely can. All you would have to do is insert a local script somewhere in your game, like starter player scripts, copy your code over into the local script. And then first things first in here, we would obviously need to make sure our parts are loaded into the game by saying game.workspace, wait for child origin, and doing the same thing for our spin part, wait for child spin. And then what you would want to do is change heartbeat to render stepped and just disable your server script and then head into your game and the effect still works as you can see here. And yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video 
or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.